my previous video I discussed about sequence, nature of sequence, limit of sequence, subsequence. At first I recommended you please go through this video. Then today's video will be so easy. And today I am going to talking about Kochi sequence. Let's see. If L is the limit of the sequence A N then elements are going closer to A. What does mean closer? If A is the limit then the term should come inside this. I can make it smaller because it is for every epsilon. If you, if I don't know L is the limit but I know it is convergent then terms of given must come closer to each other as you progress. Okay? As n becomes larger and larger, a n should or remain close to each other. Because if they are remain away, they are not going to converge. Okay? If you look at the sequence, whether I know the limit exists or does not exist, this don't matter. I can just say the terms of the sequence are going to come to each other. Let us call this sequence a new name. A n is called Kochi sequence. Kochi was a mathematician. If the sequence are eventually all the value itself very close to each other, then the sequence is called Kochi sequence. Okay? Let's see definition of Kochi sequence. A sequence Xn is called Kochi sequence if no matter how small the error for all epsilon greater than zero there exists a stage such that after this stage all the element very close to each other if there is two element after this stage then the difference between two elements always will be less than epsilon. Are you getting my point? Okay. Let's compare the convergent sequence and Kochi sequence. Let's see the definition. All definition are same. Only difference here. Here, for each epsilon greater than 0, there exists a number capital N. Similarly here, for each epsilon greater than 0, there exists a number capital N such that. Only difference here. Here N greater than this test capital N. Absolute value of Sn minus S less than epsilon. That means, after this test, the element co -clo elements are close to this limit S. And this is the picture of convergent sequence. Here difference. Here Mn greater than this test capital N. The elements Sn and Sm. The absolute value of Sn minus Sm strictly less than epsilon. That means here all the elements close after this stage and this is the 
पिक्चर ऑफ कॉची सीक्वेंस आर यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट ओके लेट सी दिस पिक्चर एगेन ओके हैव यू अंडरस्टैंड अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन कॉन्वर्जेंट सिक्वेंस एंड कॉची सिक्वेंस ऑल राइट कॉची does not mean the sequence convergence because notice the definition of the cauchy sequence in the definition of cauchy sequence there is no mention of the limit s cauchy sequence will be convergent in some special case always it it not true Cauchy does not imply the sequence convergent, but if a sequence convergent, then it always Cauchy. Just think why this is. This is very easy, and this is I want to show today. Okay, all right. Notice. If you give me this sequence x n equal to one over n, I will say x n is Cauchy sequence. How does it happen? I pick any epsilon greater than zero. I have to find a stage capital N such that n m greater than equal to capital N absolute value of one over n minus one over m. Strictly less than epsilon. This is my job. Well, let's see. Absolute value of one over m minus one over m equal to one over n plus minus one over m. By triangle inequality, we can write this is less than equal to one over n plus one over m. Okay. If we choose n greater than m, then one over m strictly less than one over n. Then we can write it one over n plus one over n, who is less than two over n. And from this line, we get this is less than epsilon. That means this imply n greater than two over epsilon. And let's come back actual mathematics. Let's choose capital N equal to two over epsilon. Okay. Then let epsilon greater than zero. We have a positive integer capital N. Such that who is equal to two over epsilon, and for all n m greater than equal to capital N, then absolute value of one over n minus one over m less than equal to one over absolute value of one over n plus absolute value of one over n, who is less than one over capital N. Plus one over capital N, and one over capital N. Since n equal to two over epsilon, we can write this is two over epsilon plus two over epsilon. Okay, and who is equal to epsilon? Then our proof has done, and you notice this sequence is convergent sequence. Because this sequence converts to zero, and I also prove this sequence also Cauchy sequence. That means Cauchy always imply convergent. Okay, let's do the proof. Let's see prove this theorem. If the statement is 
if xn converges to x then the sequence xn is cauchy here the limit point is x let's see the proof let epsilon be any positive number since xn converges to x then there exist capital n such that absolute value of xn minus x strictly less than epsilon over 2 okay because we need two term so then so i use epsilon over 2 here the name n does not matter we can replace any variable that bigger than capital n are you getting my point okay therefore m strictly greater than n then absolute value of xm minus x strictly less than epsilon over 2 now let's compare xn and xm if nm greater than capital n then absolute value of x n minus xm equal to we can write it xn minus x plus x minus xm why we write this method because in my hand has two properties absolute value of xn minus x strictly less than epsilon put it number one and absolute value of xm minus x strictly less than epsilon over 2 put it number 2 okay this can be written as less than equal to absolute value of xn minus x plus x minus xm combining 1 and 2 we can write this is less than epsilon over 2 plus less than epsilon over 2 which is equal to epsilon so our definition has done this is the definition of Cauchy sequence that means xn is a Cauchy sequence are you getting my point okay this is our proof that means all convergent sequence is Cauchy sequence okay that means convergent always imply Cauchy but Cauchy always does not imply convergent let's see one theorem let xn be a Cauchy sequence assume there exists a subsequence xn k such that xn k converts to x then xn is convergent so if I get some Cauchy sequence and if I want to show there exists a subsequence who is convergent then this Cauchy sequence must be convergent are you getting my point okay that means what is the proof? Let's see the proof. That means I want to show xn is convergent. That means I have to show
x n converts to x. Why x? Because given x n k converts to x. Okay. Since given the subsequence x n k converts to x, that means since x n k converts to x, then there exists a natural number k1 such that k greater than equal to k1 absolute value of x n k minus x always strictly less than epsilon by 2. Are you getting my point? Okay. And I have to show x n converts to x. That means I want to ex estimate absolute value of x n minus x. I can write it absolute value of x n minus x n k plus x n k minus x. Why I want to do such estimate? Because in my hand has x n k minus x less than epsilon over 2. So, I can write this method. Okay? By triangle inequality, we all of us know this is xn minus xn k plus xn k minus x. Okay? And from 1, this guy always less than epsilon over 2 when for all k greater than equal to k1 okay now i want to make this term less than epsilon over 2 then our proof will be done okay This is one term of the sequence xn and xn k is the other term of the sequence. And I want to show these are, this term are very close to each other. Why I want to show this? Because remember in that question given xn is a cos sequence since xn is a cos sequence then there exist capital n such that n n k strictly greater than of n this value absolute value of x n minus x n k strictly less than epsilon over 2 okay are you getting my point okay by the definition of subsequence, we all of us know n k always greater than equal to k, which should be greater than capital N. But notice k greater than equal to k1. Here k greater than equal to k1, and here k greater than equal to in then what should i do now let fix 
fixed k naught equal to maximum of n are you getting my point okay that imply in k always will be greater than equal to capital n okay that means for all n greater than equal to capital n this estimate absolute value of x n minus x which is equal to less than equal to absolute value of x n minus x n k plus x n k minus x which is less than equal to epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2 equal to epsilon, epsilon. okay that means for all n greater than equal to capital n absolute value of x n minus x equal less than equal to epsilon that imply x n converts to x and our flow has done are you getting my point okay let's see an interesting example of Cauchy sequence prove that every contractive sequence is a Cauchy sequence at first see what is the definition of contractive sequence a sequence x n of real numbers is called contractive if there exists a c with this condition 0 less than c less than 1 such that absolute value of x n minus x n plus 2 minus x n plus 1 less than equal to c times absolute value of x n plus 1 minus x n okay and if this condition holds then the sequence is called contractive sequence okay all right and let's see how a contractive sequence is a Cauchy sequence proof let xn be a contractive sequence okay and we have we have to show xn is a Cauchy sequence okay that means we have to show any epsilon greater than zero let epsilon greater than zero m n belongs to natural number there exists a capital N such that M N greater than capital N and absolute value of two points X N minus X N always strictly less than epsilon this is our proof okay we have to prove this condition this is my job and we can write absolute value of xm minus xn equal to xm minus xm minus 1 plus xm minus 1 plus xm minus 2 minus xm 
minus 2 up to xn plus 1 minus xn plus 1 minus xn. Okay? And by triangle inequality, I can write it absolute value of xm minus xm minus 1 plus xm minus 1 minus xm minus 2 up to x n plus 1 minus xn. Are you getting my point? Okay. Notice that condition of the contractive is absolute value of xn plus 2 minus xn minus 1 less than equal to c times absolute value of xn plus 1 minus xn. Okay. Let's again written this condition. Absolute value of xn plus 2 minus absolute xn plus 1 less than equal to c times absolute value of xn plus 1 minus xn. Okay. If we apply again this condition, then I will get c squared times xn minus xn minus 1. Okay. Similarly, apply again, then I will get c cube times xn minus 1 minus xn minus 2. If we apply this condition again and again, at last I will get less than equal to c to the power n plus 2 absolute value of x2 minus x1. And this value is a constant value. Are you getting my point? Okay. This is my final condition. And in my hand has absolute value of xm minus xm minus 1. Absolute value of xm minus 1 minus xm minus 2 up to xn plus 1 minus xn. Okay. Then... We can write absolute value of xm minus xm minus 1 equal to xm minus 2 plus 2 minus xm minus 2 plus 1. Okay. And from this line we can write it. This is equal to c to the power m minus 2. Absolute value of x2 minus x1. Similarly, we can write since we are x, absolute value of xm minus 1 minus xm minus 2. We can write absolute value of xm minus 1 minus xm minus 2 equal to xm minus 3 plus 2 minus xm minus 3 plus 1 okay who is less than equal to c to the power m minus 3 x2 minus x1 are you getting my point and the last term in my hand absolute value of xn plus 1 minus xn absolute value of xn plus 1 minus xn. Okay. And this is I can write xn minus 1 plus 2. Okay. And minus xn minus 1 plus 1. Who is I can write c to the power n minus 1 absolute value of x2 minus x1. 
Are you getting my point? Okay. This, pick this one. In my hand, absolute value of xm minus 1, this is less than equal to this. And I, I have got the, this result. Combining these two results, I will get absolute value of xm minus xn equal to, who is less than equal to, absolute value of x2 minus x1 times c to the power m minus 2 plus c to the power m minus 3 plus up to c to the power n minus 1. Okay. This is less than equal to absolute value of x2 minus x1 c to the power n minus 1 times c to the power m minus n minus 1 plus c to the power m minus n minus 2 up to 1. Are you getting my point? Okay. And this is less than or equal to absolute value of x2 minus x1 c to the power n minus 1 and this is a geometric series. Then I will get 1 minus c to the power m minus n over 1 minus c. Okay. And the contractive condition c always 0 less than c less than 1. Then we have get for all epsilon greater than 0 c to the power n minus 1 always strictly less than epsilon for all sufficiently large n. Are you getting my point? Okay. And since this is less than epsilon, so this value also will be less than epsilon. That means absolute value of xm minus xm less than epsilon for sufficiently large n. So our proof has done. This contractive sequence is a Cauchy sequence. Okay? Alright. Let's see one example of CSN. Here x1 equal to 0, x2 equal to 1 and for n greater than equal to 3, define xn equal to xn minus 1 plus xn minus 2 over 2. This is a recurrence relation. Then who is of the following is a, or are true? Option 1, xn is a modern sequence. Option 2, Limit n tends to infinity xn equal to half. Option 3. Xn is a Cauchy sequence. Option 4. Limit n tends to infinity xn equal to 2 over 3. Okay. Let's see. Given x1 equal to 0 and x2 equal to 1. Given x1 equal to 0 and x2 equal to Sorry, here not 0, here 1. And the recurrence relation is xn equal to xn minus 1 plus xn minus 2 over 2. Okay? Have you understood? Okay. If I put n equal to 3, because here given for n greater than equal to 3. If I put n equal to 3, then I will get x3 equal to x2 plus x1 over 2. And this value will be half. Okay? 
then I will get 0 less than 1 but here the condition break because 1 greater than half so this sequence cannot be monotone sequence are you getting my point okay so option 1 is wrong option okay let's see other option if i add that term vertically at first put the value x1 equal to 0 x2 equal to 1 x3 equal to x1 plus x2 over 2 x4 equal to x2 plus x3 over 2 up to xn equal to x n minus 1 plus x n minus 2 over 2. Okay? If I add this term vertically, then what I will get? I will get x1 plus x2 plus x3 up to x n minus 1 plus x n equal to here the value is 0 here 1 I will get 1 plus x1 over 2 here x2 over 2 plus x2 over 2 that means I will get plus x2 similarly plus x3 up to x n minus 2 here I will get x n minus 1 over 2 ok are you getting my point how I write this condition just think for few seconds ok from this line I can write here x2 will be cancelled similarly x3 and the cancel will be up to xn minus 2 ok that means at last I will get xn plus xn minus 1 over 2 equal to 1. Are you getting my point? Okay. Why? The value x1 not use here because given x1 equal to 0 ok since the final condition I will get xn plus
xn minus 2 equal to 1. Okay. Let consider limit xn equal to L. Okay. If we put this limit here, then I will get L plus L over 2 equal to 1. That imply 3L over 2 equal to 1. That imply L equal to 2 over 3. This is our limit. So, option 4 is right option. Limit equal to 2 over 3. Since limit exists of this recurrence relation, that means this sequence is convergent sequence. And we all of us know, if a sequence convergent, then it must be Cauchy. So option 3 also right. Okay? Well.